Welcome one and all to another edition of the Default Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. A storm may be a brewing. That means water may be a coming. And that could mean leaks around your home or office. Don't stress out. Don't fret because Water Cleanup of Florida is here to help you out. Just give them a call 954-579-0356. With over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, their entire team, they will not only assess your water issues, be it leaks, they will dry it, fix it, and with their licensed, insured, certified contractors, they will make it look brand new, and they will do it all themselves. And not a lot of places, not a lot of people can say that. That's why you want to give them a call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 954 579 Zero three five six for water cleanup of Florida. You can also check them out online at wcufl.com. Also, the socials, water cleanup FL, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Plus, check out their over 75 star reviews on Google. Water cleanup of Florida. If you have the schmutz, they have the guts. Team that has had the guts so far this season is the Miami Dolphins. The last couple weeks haven't been pretty. But they have been victorious. Miami Dolphins now sit at 6-3, and three, right in the thick of the AFC playoff picture. We talked with the one and only John Congemi on Pigskin Playbook about those Miami Dolphins right here on the five reasons, right here on the five reasons. All right, uh, let's start with the Dolphins. That, that was kind of a good thing because, uh, you know, we've been saying this for a while that, uh, you know, if you're not going to be good, which they are good, but uh, at least be exciting. They might have the most dynamic offense uh, with apologies to the Kansas City Chiefs who struggled to score 20 points in overtime. Uh, The Miami Dolphins offense. Wow. I mean, uh, those uh, like first seven, eight possessions, uh, they couldn't be stopped. They were amazing. And they managed to kind of, uh, you know, perpetuate that even in the late going in that game when they really needed to. They haven't been stopped, Defo, not only for possessions, but for games and weeks. Uh, It's unbelievable how Tyree Kill, one person, can come in and get into a new offense with a new head coach, and it looks like we have a new quarterback, right? Yeah. It, it yeah, made yeah. him, it made Tua, all, it accentuated all the things that he does really well, and he's getting better at all the stuff maybe he had some shortcomings at. And, you know, he's still, there's still more points to be had. You know, there, there's still points that, that the Dolphins are leaving out on the field in terms of, if he hits Waddle in stride, uh, it's it's easy six at the end of the game. Yep, he, yep, yep. You know, there's been a, a couple instances where he has that, but he, he everybody forgets the 30 other throws that he made that were perfect, you know, and, and that we're always thinking about, well, there's a couple more. Well, those couple more make it a laugher. Make, make Against bad teams, it's a laugher. Yeah. It's not you're hanging on to every possession that you have to score. Uh, all of a sudden, because Justin Fields sets an NFL record with his legs, you know, rushing for 176 yards. So it, it's been fun to watch on offense. On defense, it hasn't been. But hopefully, you know, Byron Jones comes back by the 2029 season <laughs> and we're going to be OK. You know, so yeah. ho- hopefully that'll straighten itself out. Uh, X has been playing kind of, you know, 80 percent, 70 percent. You know, he's not I don't think he's healthy, but he's out there because I don't think the Dolphins have much of a choice. So now you get an edge rusher in Bradley Chubb, who, who looks like the part, you know, in terms of him getting to the quarterback. He has to finish, but he's he's been around the quarterback, you know, for the plays that he had uh, with the Dolphins. And Wilson at running back looks like a great tandem yep. for Mostert. So I, I think that, you know, the no-name offensive line is, is starting to, you know, come about and, and play better. So I think this team is, you know, this is their strike zone. I said this on Sunday. This is the, the time of the year where they have to clean up. They have to get to eight, nine, 10 wins uh, in a hurry because you get San Fran on the horizon, you get Buffalo who went down at home uh, on the horizon, who's going to be better when the Dolphins play them the next time. And then you have those tricky games against New England and the Jets. Now, I don't care if you, if you think they're, they are mediocre, but mediocre, so it was Detroit and Chicago were less than mediocre, yep. and they gave the Dolphins fits. So it'll be a, it'll be tough sledding against those two. John, the offense has been everything we hoped it could be and more. I mean, Tua is finally getting the recognition. People are acting like he wasn't hated on, and it's just assumed he's been great. 
when all we heard off off season was who's next for the Dolphins at quarterback. So that's how good the offense has been. Tyreek Hill is now considered by many the best receiver in football. When you weren't hearing that in the off season, Jalen Waddle is getting top five, top ten receiver comps, which he wasn't. The running game is starting to wake up. Um, the offense is what we haven't seen since Dan Marino. I mean, or Dan Marino even in his heyday. The defense is not what we wanted to see. Chubb is supposed to make it better. He was on a, a snap count last week. Or do you think we see finally more of him this weekend? Because I feel like that's what would make the difference is letting Chubb Phillips loose, and that allows the corners to not have to be on islands all day long, which they've been most of the season. You know, I, I don't know how they're going to work the rotation. I would think he's going to play uh, the majority of the snaps, but you have guys that are, you know, you put Ingram in for one series, and he's the guy that gets the sack. Yeah, yeah. You know, after Chubb wears him out, wears him out, wears him out, now you get a different body type coming at you. And he's he gets around the tackle and, and gets the sack. So you have Van Ginkle, you know, like Ogba is in the witness protection program. We're hoping he comes back <laughs> and, and, you know, makes his his presence known on, on the edge. But uh, the Dolphins missed a lot of tackles in that game. And you're yes. going to miss a lot of tackles against Justin Fields. You know, they had guys diving at ankles because – there's a guy 6'3", 230 pounds that is the fastest guy on the field. Yep. And nobody could get him on the ground. And I don't know if you're going to see that type of quarterback as the Dolphins move along. You know, you've got the Texans coming up. you got the Browns coming up. You get a bye week sandwiched in there. And then you get, you know, Garoppolo and, and, and guys of that stature, Herbert. So I, I think the Dolphins are going to be okay at the, once they get healthier on defense, I think they're going to be okay. But to your original point, Luby, Chubb's going to play as much as he can. I think he's going to play as many snaps as he can. And when you make that substitution, I think you're going to get a hungrier player knowing that I only have X amount of plays to get it done. And it, it, puts, it puts the pressure on those guys to, to make plays when they get their chances. We were highly uh, critical of uh, McDaniel's uh, decision not to go for a field goal, go for a uh, fourth down play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Nearly cost him a game. That, that was a couple of weeks ago. So uh, what did you make of his decision to uh, forsake the field goal try and go for a fourth down, which failed, which on the scoreboard then the dynamic uh, changed dramatically as we came down the stretch there? Because uh, the truth was, uh, you know, uh, where uh, the Dolphins uh, victimized by what should have been a pass interference call, you're in a tight ball game there. That, that yeah. would put him in field goal range right there, if not a losing situation. So, uh, you know, it's the old thing when you put your hand on a stove. Uh, do you go back and uh, put your palm right on there again after you turn <laughs> it up to high just to see if it's heated up? Uh, what did you think of that? What, what did you make he, of that decision? I thought against the Steelers it was a no-brainer to kick the field goal only yeah. because of the opponent you were playing that night. The Steelers didn't look like they could move the football, you know, against – St. Thomas Aquinas, if they yeah. happen to come on the field. That well, night. I know it was going to make a six-point margin, a nine-point margin. Which it, it was going to make it a yeah. two-score game. Yeah. But even if it was in the same scenario as Chicago, I felt like they should have kicked it against the Steelers because it puts the game out of reach, just like going for it on fourth down and icing the yeah. game that way. Against Chicago, I, I was more in the middle of the road because I felt like Yes, the Dolphins had played complimentary football, but the compliment came courtesy of the special teams and, and six points by blocking a punt. It didn't really come as part of the defense of becoming up, ma making stops and being consistent all day. And I felt like if your offense couldn't be stopped all afternoon, give them the best chance to go out and close the game out because you didn't want to leave it in the hands. You didn't think Chicago was going to score seven. They may get, they may get three but you didn't think they were going to drive the field and score seven. So I felt like the Dolphins, when you look at the result, it was an incompletion, but they had exactly what they wanted. They, they should have put the game away. I think it was a body language type of miscommunication where Smythe turned his head upfield at the last yeah, minute yeah. where Tua was ready to deliver the football, and he had hesitation, and, and it just you know threw like a, a sinker into the ground. But um, – I felt I felt more confident with him going for it there. I, I see the point of kicking, um, but I do see them feeling like you know what the offense has been the beat the chest type of of unit all day. We're going to win it with those guys. I'd rather go down with our hot hand than leaving it to the field of well, you know what we had a chance we didn't take it. You know they couldn't stop us all afternoon. 
So I was okay. I was I was better with that situation than I was against the Steelers. Uh, more understandable, uh, no question. Uh, have they lost a little faith in Sanders, who used to be Mr. Reliable? But now, I mean, where guys are kicking. Uh, you, you see these stats on kickers in the pros uh, and, uh, you know, diametric opposition to what you're seeing in college, where uh, a guy inside of 50 is usually perfect. Or, yeah. you know, you'll see the stat, oh, well, he's made his last 35 from inside of 40 yards. Uh, right. But Sanders is uh, kicking at 70%. Uh, have they lost a little faith in this guy? Is that possible? I don't know. I may, maybe behind the scenes uh, they might have. I still think he's, you know, a kicker that should get it done. The guy works hard. The guy's got yeah. the right. He know, was dynamite. At tools. One time. Yeah, I, I still yeah. have confidence in him, and I wouldn't have minded seeing him trot out on the field and make that field goal, given the chance. I'm sure he wanted that other opportunity to come out and, and kind of seal the game that way. But, um, yeah, you're right, Pifo. It seems like guys from 55, or, you know, 15 out of 16. Yeah. How, how many how many attempts do they have again? You know, from 50 yards plus? It, it's crazy. But as you get closer to, you know, it, it seems like they're missing more. Uh, Sanders is missing more kicks in that intermediate zone or that chip shot range instead of, you know, the 52, 57, 58 yarders. Yeah, never good, though, when you can't count on your kicker. Uh, all of a sudden he's got a gyroscope and a ball and it's going all <laughs> over the place. But uh and, and, you know, you wouldn't want a coach necessarily to lose his courage completely. I mean, I, I don't know that you have to be Brandon Staley, you know, and go for it all the time on, on fourth down. But, uh, you know, you, you do like to see, I mean, uh, people are always complaining. Uh, of course, you had the whole Tony Sperano thing uh, about being too conservative. And, and, and I was never a fan of that. So I, I don't necessarily want to see McDaniel completely give up on the idea of going for it in certain spots. But uh, this one was less uh, from the uh, dynamics of the scoreboard. Uh, you know, uh, less egregious than not putting the uh, second score on the board that would have to be achieved by Pittsburgh uh, when they were going nowhere, as you said, offensively. So, uh, you know, probably not as critical uh, of a situation. Uh, all right, so the uh, Dolphins moved to 6-3. and three. They have a couple of soft games uh, coming up, or at least uh, what would appear to be very winnable games, and puts them in a good spot, puts us in a good spot with the over eight and a hook, you would have to think. Well, do we have to sweat that out, John? Well, what's your opinion? How you could know, they not win nine games from here? They, they have this is wins. why. Yeah. This is why I don't gamble these. <laughs> um, the last two weeks now. Look at me. I, I think, I've already. I'm counting the money already. I think. I think the Dolphins covered against Detroit. Yes. But when I saw the line, I was like, it could be 14, and I would have slammed the Dolphins. Right? I would have been like all over the Dolphins. They're going to kill Detroit. Yeah. Detroit plays great. Same scenario with the Bears. I, I looked at the line, and it was. Only a couple of points. Four points, yeah. And I'm going, how how can that be? The Dolphins have got to be, you know, at least touchdown to a touchdown and a few close to a field goal favorite in this game. You know, I would have won, been all over the Dolphins. So now you have the Browns and the Texans. I would think it's going to be the same scenario. It's going to be a little bit more. I have a uh, four really point looked. line, uh, four point line at home against the Browns. See the, Which that, is kind that, of conservative. See, now that one I, I, yeah. I, I could see, uh, you know, go ahead and bang in the uh, Dolphins on. But uh, the Bears, surprisingly, I mean, were not who we thought they were. If you watched their game the week prior, uh, it, it seemed like there was a metamorphosis, some kind of epiphany. Something hit Justin Fields. And while they were trading away their better players, uh, you know, and obviously uh, move towards next year and whatever the uh, future, however distant down the road, they're going to be good again. Uh, Fields seemed to have found something the week before. I, I was watching that game against the Cowboys. I'm, yeah, and I'm thinking, wow, the, the, the this, this game, kid's starting to pick it up. Game. Yeah, two, Patriots, I guess it was. Yeah. Games. Oh, the Patriots. I'm sorry. They dominated the yeah, Patriots. I mean, whatever, whoever they played the prior week, uh, Fields looked really, really good. I mean, he looked like a different guy than he did a year ago when we saw him. And I thought, wow, th this kid could be trouble. So the four point line uh, didn't really surprise me that much, especially since the Finns were on the road. And and they have, uh, you know, I mean. I don't know that they're playing in our competition, but they're in a lot of tight games, no doubt. Yeah. Well, they're, they're playing a lot of fourth quarter games where they have to continue to apply the pressure offensively. And on, honest, uh, you look at this defense, they probably play poor for three quarters and play their best football, you know, where they get a stop somehow at the end. They, they get off the field and they give an opportunity for the Dolphins to continue that, uh, you know, that passing game that's been unstoppable with, uh, a hint of run. And, and I think the run is, you know, if they, if the dolphins can run for 70, 80 yards, that's like running for 140 yards for other teams <laughs> because they're throwing the football so much. Yeah. 
and, and they're staying on the field and, and it keeps the defense honest. It keeps yeah, them yeah. guessing. You know, they can't really they can't really hone in on on Tua because now you gotta go man coverage and you're one step away from making it another touchdown. Yep. With Hill. Yeah, last year too, I mean, uh their running backs were eh, at best run of the mill. Small guys that uh, seem to get knocked around a little bit. And uh, as you mentioned, with this guy, uh, Wilson, and then Mostert, uh, that's a nice duo. And, and it's uh, two guys that McDaniel has familiarity with. Uh, Wilson walked right in there and picked up the game right away. And uh, Mostert's been running really hard. So, uh, you know, you, you've improved uh, the, the quality of the guys that are carrying the football for you also. So, uh, you know, that, that certainly looks like an area of the game where, where they're eligible to improve. Yes, the Canes did play. Uh, sort of. Look, the Canes had a game. I don't know what you consider it. I'm an FSU fan. I'm not actually trying to rub it in because FSU has been down for years, eh, about five years, and was in this exact position two years ago, losing to the Canes by the exact same differential, 42 points. We shall see. Uh, we talked to Drunk Jimmy a bit about the Canes game. I don't think anyone down here in South Florida really wants to relish it. I... Of course, the crystal ball hire was a great hire. I was one that didn't think the Canes could even get crystal ball. He was at Oregon. They were winning pretty consistently. I thought Oregon wanted to keep him. Oregon actually did not fight the Canes for him. Oregon actually had an offer to keep him. He had a salary. They When Miami went higher, Oregon did not match. Oregon did not go higher. So they didn't fight for Mario crystal ball, whatever that means. But he had recruited at Oregon in a way they never had recruited. He had won Pac-12 titles. He had... Gone to the Rose Bowl. I think he won one, if not two Rose Bowls. Something that Oregon had done, but still something that showed he was a good coach and they were sort of struggling when Willie Taggart took over with Mario Cristobal as the offensive coordinator and Mario Cristobal took over for Taggart. Took him to an even better level. He did a good job there. So the hire was something that was impressive. I did not think the Canes would do it. I did not think the Canes could put a big-name staff together that was high-paying. But one thing I did say at the time, and I meant it, and it's come to fruition. Just because those guys were big names doesn't mean they were all heralded. Josh Gaddis won the Bros Award. Michigan fans were very happy to see him go. So he won the Bros Award, but the success of Michigan was built around a very boring offense that even Michigan fans weren't excited to have. And it wasn't until, you know, Gaddis sort of released the reins that they got better. So Michigan fans were actually happy to see him go. And that's sort of a thing. When, when fans are okay with a coach leaving, that's not a great thing. Kevin Steele, he's been around a long time. He's a name people know. He was out of football for a year. The one job he got was Maryland, a coach, and Mike Loxley, who may have saved his job by having Maryland be average this year, but Maryland was not a good job. It was not a big job, and was the fact that Kevin Steele was taking that job said a lot. So these are names that are big names. These are names that are getting, guys that are getting paid well, but they actually weren't highly sought after names. That's one thing I said at the time. Cristobal, guy that's a really good recruiter. Crystal Ball guy with Miami Roots. Crystal Ball, a guy that did a good job at Oregon. But in his time at Oregon, he was going to lose two to three games, maybe four games, that he shouldn't have lost. His offenses were not good. His offenses were very vanilla. And the fans themselves were very frustrated by his offenses. And when he left, they were not upset with him leaving. Again, fans usually want their coaches to say if they're good. So these were things that Miami got their guy. Miami got a guy I didn't think they could get. But it wasn't an open and shut case. Now it's only your one. Crystal Ball's going nowhere. But to me, as the season goes on, this team's getting worse. Now again, he's trying to put a system in. These players obviously don't fit that system. So the two clashing, you're going to have struggles. So the, maybe you just throw out the first year. I don't know. He needs to get his, his players in. That's 100% true. But you would think a staff that's this highly paid with the expectations that were there. People thought they could win the Coastal. People thought they could contend in the ACC. They are one of the worst teams in the ACC, which is not a good conference. So, and they're getting worse every week. I mean, look, Florida State is in year three of Norvell's regime. So he has a lot of his own players and his mindset's in there. And that's 100% true. But to lose by 42 at home, that, that's a lot. So we'll see what happens with the Canes the rest of the season. They take on Georgia Tech, a not good team that they're an underdog with. So we'll see what happens in that game. We'll see the Heat. Tough, tough, tough game last night. They are not good right now. They're just not. They're 4-7. and seven. They're 12th in the Eastern Conference. Their offense was supposed to be their calling card. It's not great. It's not horrible, but it's not great. And their defense is not good at all. And they're struggling. And there's a lot of season left. And they are. And Jimmy Butler's been in and out of the lineup recently. They look like they turned a tide versus the Warriors. And then Butler misses the next couple games. So you're not throwing everything out. You're not stressing out. You're not running for the hills with the Heat. 
But it is a little concerning that they're not four and seven and they are struggling on both ends of the floor. We will see how that comes together. We will see what happens in our sporting world. It is election day. The only thing I will say is go out and vote. Please go and vote. I don't care who you're voting for, what you're voting for. Go and vote. We live in this country. A great part of this country is we have freedom of the press and we have the the ability to vote. I don't know if it's a right. I don't know what you call it. The ability, if you're a citizen, to go and vote. Go and vote. You know, let your voice, that's how your voice is heard. You want to rant and rave on Twitter? Hey, do you. You want to rant and rave here? Do you. You want to rant and rave on YouTube? Do you. But if you're not voting, okay, that's the one place you can actually be heard. Go and vote. I hope everyone has a good election day. I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Check out our show each and every morning, live, 7 to 9 on South Florida Live, The Defoe Show with Luby. You can check us out, our national podcast on the Believe Network, B-L-E-A-V.com. Search after hours. And most days right here, our South Florida content, The Devo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Land Lovers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landloversbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Land Lovers, Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landloversbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Land Lovers for making you always feel right at home.